Are you aware of the dreaded paragraph 3 on the Prince Edward Island Purchase and Sale Agreement? Well, it's not exactly dreaded, but sometimes it's overlooked. You see, in Prince Edward Island, we have the advantage that our forms are pretty well standardized, inasmuch that we're not customizing typically paragraphs, inserting and retracting or removing paragraphs. The forms are the forms, and they're updated from time to time. The disadvantage to that is sometimes owners, vendors, and listing agents will overlook paragraph 3 when they're presenting the offer, which can turn into catastrophic problems throughout the process, particularly at close. So having said that, firstly, I just want to mention that the forms in PEI are pretty well standardized. In other provinces and states, it's typical for brokerages and even individual agents to have their own customized forms. At one deal I looked at many years ago from Arizona, it was 430 some odd paragraphs over the course of 40 pages. Thankfully, in PEI, we basically have a purchase and sale agreement. We typically attach a Schedule A that pertains to either a residential listing or we have a Schedule A for land. And then you have an agency disclosure form. The agency disclosure form basically just tells you who your agent and or broker is representing. In addition to that, we would usually add a property disclosure to that. And that is essentially it. Sometimes the schedule B and other documents like maps, surveys, geolinks, ortho photos, pictures of contents could be included. But essentially, it's the schedule A of the purchase and sale and the agency agreement. Having said that, what happens sometimes is when these offers are presented, the agent or broker may go over them so fast that they miss paragraph three and its contents. And there's a reason for that. Getting back to the pre presentation of the offer, typically all people are concerned about is the price and the closing date. Most of the time there's going to be some inclusions. The inclusions and the common sense items are spelt out clearly in paragraph 3, page 2 um, of the purchase and sale agreement at the top. The challenge is the paragraph font almost blends with the rest of the agreement, particularly the first line, as I'll show you in this illustration. The first line assumes the same text as the paragraph and sometimes can be missed, even though someone has initialed millimeters away from where the items are being asked for. Paragraph 3 essentially is used to indicate what items would be inclusive or included with the purchase price. Some examples might be a tractor, uh, appliances, dishwasher, fridge, stove, a kitchen table. Typically agents do not want to get into the furniture, appliances, vehicles, and lawnmower business. However, sometimes purchasers will request that this stuff is indicated on the purchase and sale. My recommendation is keep it as clean as possible. Fridge, stove, washer, dryer is pretty typical. Getting into other things like lawnmowers, uh, uh, docks, fencing, whatever, sometimes can cause a lot of confusion. And at the end of the day, you may end up paying more for that item, because sometimes someone will look at the lawnmower as being worth 25000 when it's only worth five. So pay attention to paragraph three when you're both writing, and particularly when you're selling, because you don't want to find out at closing day that you've just thrown in an extra fifty grand worth of stuff that you didn't want to. My practice is typically to have this paragraph initialed. That way I absolutely make sure my purchaser and or vendors are aware of its contents. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Press the little bell symbol beside it. And if you have any questions about PEI real estate or Prince Edward Island in general, put them in the comments below.